show that looks at the week's news and asks the question on everyone's lips. What? Why is this happening and are we all going to die? <laughs> We're coming to you in a week that has seen some sad, sad news. Anthony Scaramucci, White House Communications Director and Pound Shop Goodfella has been fired. <laughs> and now we've put together the highlights of his time in office. Nights. <laughs> Good night, sweet mooch. We hardly knew ye. <laughs> and what we did know of ye is that ye were a crazy bastard. <laughs> Before we get on with the show, let's go over to the MASH news desk for the latest headlines. Headlines on the hour. Theresa May to return from holiday, refreshed, revitalised and completely shit at her job. <laughs> price of electricity to rise, say men who set the price of electricity. <laughs> and hot tub owners pretend it's not just a nasty sex pond. First, Tony Blair says he will probably do another Iraq war after getting off scot-free with the first one. <laughs> after the High Court decided not to prosecute him, a cocky Blair left the court saying he wasn't afraid of no war crime bullshit and he will invade Iraq again if he feels like it. <laughs> Let's join our reporter Nathan outside the court. Nathan, tell us what's been happening. Blair arrived at the High Court wearing a tracksuit and claiming that the feds ain't got no shit on me. <laughs> As it was decided no action would be taken against him, he could be heard to comment, get in, before going outside and cracking open a can of lager. <laughs> on the court steps, Blair claimed he could invade another country and get away with it whenever he wanted to, adding that he had some serious gangster shit going on. <laughs> Prince Philip died. Sorry, retired yesterday. <laughs> and following his final public engagement, the Foreign Averse Royal feels he can finally speak his mind. The reliably offensive prince, who nobody realised was on his best behaviour for the last 50 years, <laughs> now feels free to truly unleash the dark musings of his mad, privileged mind. <laughs> Emma is at Buckingham Palace. Emma, how batshit is D-Mob Happy Prince Philip being right now? Pretty batshit, Tom. Today, as he watched TV with the Queen, Philip saw a clip of Usain Bolt and speculated for several minutes about whether African athletes practice by jumping over crocodiles. <laughs> Surely that's business as usual. Yes, but then he called Prince Charles a big-eared piss streak and launched a surprising broadside against the entire nation of Belgium, calling them mayonnaise-eating wankers. Then he phoned Brad Pitt to inform him that World War Z was a pile of toss. <laughs> He really is a maverick and a true asset to the nation. Yes, it's very sad. He'll no longer be doing whatever it is he did. <laughs> and finally, breastfeeding mums have confirmed that they are not offended by people looking at their amazing tits. <laughs> the news which comes during World Breastfeeding Week, a global celebration of jugs in action, <laughs> reassures Britons that it's OK to admire a lovely pair of milk and gorge boobs and that there's no need to be all weird and sly about it. Emma Bradford is in a cafe packed to the rafters with splendid motherly milk bags. Emma, how much of an eyeful are you getting? Susan, I am taking it all in and I'm loving it. <laughs> Nursing women have completely incredible boobs that up until now could only be admired with a sly sideways glance. <laughs> I know sometimes people feel uncomfortable about me using my body's natural secretions to keep my baby alive while out of the house, but like, that's why we're saying, like, don't divert your eyes. Like, this is the best that my tits are ever going to look. Like, right now, you know, they're massive, but, you know, after this baby business, they're, they're going south for the winter. <laughs> Back to you, Susan. <laughs> Thanks, Emma. Mine are fake. More from us later. <laughs> So, let's move on to Brexit. This week, a YouGov poll revealed that 61% of Leave voters over 65 believe significantly damaging the economy is a price worth paying for Brexit. And half said they would be prepared to have a family member lose their job in order to get the Brexit they want. Now, speaking as a representative of the younger generation, let me just ask older Leave voters a question. Why do 
you hate us? <laughs> Was it fidget spinners? <laughs> Was it the Kaiser Chiefs? <laughs> Was it the Star Wars prequels? <laughs> we hated them too! <laughs> so, how is it going? You'd have thought it'd be all quiet on the Brexit front, what with Theresa May off on holiday. That's right, the kitten heels are off and the out of office is on, which presumably reads something like this. I will be back in the office on August 14th, brackets, fingers crossed. <laughs> I will have limited access to my emails and my emotions. <laughs> in case of emergency, please call a general election. <laughs> Meanwhile, forward all queries to Amber Rudd, and this goes for when I get back as well. Normal human regards, Theresa. <laughs> Last week, Chancellor Philip Hammond suggested there would be a transitional deal with the EU, which would mean the UK would have to continue with some version of freedom of movement. Then, on Monday, a spokesperson for Number 10 said that freedom of movement would end in 2019. Things have got pretty confusing about what Brexit is going to entail. Take a look at this recent graph on the BBC News website, which is supposed to show where the Leave and Remain vote went at the general election. All that graph is telling me is that the news has finally had a breakdown. <laughs> Brexit is in such a mess, even graphs have gone to shit. <laughs> Unless it's a magic eye picture and you just have to look really carefully and eventually you'll be able to see the message, your country is fucked. <laughs> To add further insight into the Brexit process, please welcome our Brexit correspondent, Andrew Hunter-Murray! Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Nish. Hello, Andrew. So, why is there so much infighting happening over Brexit? Well, we've got two basic problems, right? We need to sort out free movement of people and we need to sort out trade deals with the rest of the world. So, how do we solve both of these issues at the same time? I mean, I would say a unified and cohesive sense of what our goals are going into these talks. No, Nish, no, absolutely not. What we need to do is take it a step further. Well, what are you suggesting? I suggest we leave the rest of the world. <laughs> I mean, that's definitely going to require a second referendum. <laughs> well, I spoke to a couple of experts to see how we can begin to truly take back control. OK. Brexit has given us the perfect opportunity to shake off our European hangers-on. But despite Britain's best efforts to make the lines on maps of the Middle East nice and straight, or to heroically meet opium demand in 19th century China, the rest of the world remains ungrateful. Could it be time for a British world exit, or, as some people are calling it, a Brexit? <laughs> to discuss making Brexit a reality, I spoke to Labour MP and notorious Ramona, Chris Bryant. Brexit is going to happen, but if we want to become truly independent, why don't we go the whole hog with the Wexit? Mm, Wexit? Wexit is British world exit, OK? Britain makes countless weapons. We grow food. We make our own chairs, OK? Surely we can be independent. I don't think we do make our own chairs anymore, do we? And we certainly don't grow all our own crops. If we could grow a few more crops and make a few more chairs, surely it would be like a heavily armed version of the good life. <laughs> Except if one of the neighbours came round, we could shoot them. That is about the stupidest question I've ever been asked. Thank you. <laughs> Some people have likened people who voted for Brexit mm. to utter pricks. Is that a fair statement? <laughs> Um, look, I mean, I wish we'd voted to remain. I think it's it's like we're cutting our throats and as every day goes by, there's more um, evidence that the Brexiteers had absolutely no plan for Brexit whatsoever and it's a great big step into the dark and all the rest of it. So utter pricks is language you wouldn't use? <laughs> Not on this programme. What about jowly zeno bastards? Is that a term you'd use? No. Ruddy-cheeked... Turbo racists. No. Nano Hitlers. Mm. I'm not sure what a nano Hitler is. OK. I'm putting you down as a yes for nano Hitlers. <laughs> so, Chris Bryant may not be convinced, but I still believe that Brexit could work. And I know exactly how to do it. Should we relocate the United Kingdom to space? The UK is 70-odd million people. Yeah. Um, the number of people who've been into space numbers in the thousands. It would be an unprecedented 
endeavour. But it's better than hearing people talking foreign on the bus, isn't it? <laughs> In the film Close Encounters, the world discovers intelligent alien life. Now, if that happens in space, is there a way that you can think of that we can persuade them to buy British? I don't know how to answer that. I'm really sorry. I just want to show you. Mm. So here is an iconic picture. This is Neil Armstrong standing on the moon. It, it's, it's, it's Buzz Aldrin, actually. It's Buzz Aldrin yeah. standing on the moon. Neil is in the reflection. It's Neil... Uh, I was just, Neil's in the reflection mm. here yeah. of Buzz Aldrin standing on the moon. Here's another one. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's better, isn't it? It's not really my taste. Um, OK, I hear what you're saying. So, Britain on the moon, Britain in space. Could we do it? You could technically do it. I wouldn't want to manage the project. Do you think it's a bad idea? Yeah, I think it's quite a bad idea, yeah. But it's not a terrible idea. No, it's not a terrible idea. No. Okay. It's a bad idea. Oh, yeah, but it's not a terrible idea. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's a bad idea, though. Yeah. 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 But it's not terrible. <laughs> Drifting through a bleak, barren nothingness, frightened, alone, and with no end in sight, David Davis certainly has his work cut out in Brussels. But if Brexit goes right, then maybe, just maybe, after one small step, Britain will be ready for the giant leap of Bowexit. I think, Andrew, before we attempt to exit the world, ministers need to put their differences aside and work together to make Brexit work again. Nish, with respect, I disagree, and I will see you on the moon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Hunter Murray! Thank you. Rachel Paris is, as ever, taking your messages at the hashtag nofilter social media wall. Rachel, what does Britain have to say for itself? <laughs> Nish, you crack me up. Uh... <laughs> So, tonight, in the light of Trump sacking a communications director, Anthony Scaramucci, we're reaching out to you, the public, by asking the question, have you ever been sacked from a job and why? So, please do send in your answers, for God's sake. <laughs> don't forget to hashtag the MASH report, because I think this is going to be really interesting, don't you, Nish? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying not to be sacked from this job right now. <laughs> <laughs> don't count on it. <laughs> So, in the meantime, we've had some messages coming in about the stories so far. This one is from Hampstead Mummy on the breastfeeding story. She says, people don't realise how difficult breastfeeding can be, especially once your children go to university. <laughs> yes, quite. Hard enough to get them to look you in the eye, Hampstead Mummy, let alone latch on. OK, moving on! <laughs> OK, happily niche. Oh, this is exciting. We've got a very first response to the question which we posed about being sacked. Sideshow Blob has <laughs> responded, me and the lads at work got pissed at lunch and crashed our van into a Chinese restaurant. Obviously, I got fired. A shame, because I liked being in the police. <laughs> <laughs> you poor thing. <laughs> Please do keep sending in your answers to the question, what job have you been sacked from and why? We're really, really keen to engage with you for some reason. <laughs> Over to you, Nish. Thank you, Rachel Paris. <laughs> Let's go back to the MASH news desk for the latest stories. The latest headlines put cancer in e-cigarettes, say non-smokers. <laughs> Vegan scientist discovers second topic of conversation. <laughs> and child's drawing nowhere near good enough for expensive new fridge. <laughs> but first, Theresa May's pink holiday dress is nowhere near selling out online. High Street retailer Next has confirmed that the damask shirt dress sported by the PM while on holiday in Italy is not flying off the rails in any way, shape or form. <laughs> Nathan is standing by a mannequin with more. Dubbed the May Not Effect, retailers have never seen sales so unimproved by huge press coverage of their stock. <laughs> the shop's website has the same, if not slightly less, traffic and no-one is stampeding anywhere or punching anyone to get this dress. <laughs> Thanks, Nathan. 
Experts have confirmed that post-truth is just a clever name for wankers talking shit. <laughs> Researchers at the Institute for Studies found that far from so-called post-truth being a new phenomenon, wankers have been talking shit since the beginning of civilization. <laughs> We're joined in our Birmingham studio by Professor Henry Brubaker, who has been leading a major study into post-truth. So, Professor, post-truth, is it nonsense? As far back as medieval times, wankers were talking shit. Uh, <laughs> mainly about dragons and goblins. Uh, pretty much any scary-looking forest was claimed to have some sort of troll, witch or a giant snake covered in tits. So you're saying that post-truth is itself, uh, rather ironically, bullshit? <laughs> People just love saying things are post-whatever, cos it makes them feel clever. Uh, like if you called brunch post-breakfast. <laughs> I mean, the word brunch is pretty annoying, but just you saying post-breakfast makes me want to punch you in the face. <laughs> well, I'd want paying extra for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Professor Brubaker. Donald Trump's horrifying communications director, Anthony Scaramucci, has been sacked for pretending he had a cool nickname. <laughs> Scaramucci claimed he was commonly called the Mooch. However, former school friends confirmed that he was actually known by the less flattering nickname, Small Eyes Jizz Hands. <laughs> Here's Nathan with more. The Mooch is an admittedly cool name that evokes a Fonz-like ability to operate jukeboxes by kicking them. <laughs> However, Anthony Scaramucci is guilty of perhaps the worst crime a man can commit, making up his own nickname. <laughs> Earlier, I spoke to Mary Fisher, who went to the American version of school with him. Well, at first, we used to just call him Small Eyes, because... You know, he has the eerie, marble-like eyes of a, a male porn star. But then uh, another kid noticed that um, he had a, a wet and slightly sticky handshake like holding a frog or some ejaculate. That's where jizz hands came from. <laughs> so, uh, finally, uh, we settled on uh, small eyes jizz hands. <laughs> he used to make him incredibly angry, which was sort of the point. <laughs> My school nickname was The Badass. I struggle to believe that, Tom. <laughs> no, really, I was born without an anus. <laughs> now, in 2017, we are overwhelmed with choice. Sometimes it's hard to know how best to spend our valuable time and money. Here to guide us with his expert reviews, please welcome to the show our arts and lifestyle reviewer, Pierre Novelli. Hi, Pierre. Um, Hi, so, what have you got for us this week? Well, first up, I have Cuisine, and I'm reviewing a Yelp review from James F., who went to a Café Rouge in Durham. There we go. James said, The atmosphere was enjoyable, but the steak tartare was disappointing. Uh, now, Nish, there's a lot to like in this review. My main critique would be I'd like to know more about his expectations going in. What was he hoping for from the steak tartare? Why did it fail to deliver? But I do admire his brevity uh, and his emoji use, so it's four out of five from me. Are you reviewing reviews? That's right, Nish. I'm, I'm reviewing real reviews left by people on the internet. OK, I have a follow-up question. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> well, reviewing used to be a profession, Nish. An opinion had weight. It was printed on paper. It was something you could hold in your hand. But now everyone's a reviewer. Reviews have been outsourced to the general public, like uh, driving taxis or organising casual sex. Uh, <laughs> But who reviews the reviewers, Nish? Who watches the Watchmen? What? Yeah, that is a good point. I mean, why do we trust people when... It's me. I do that now. Me. <laughs> so, here's uh, Jane's Amazon review of her purchase of a Pritt stick. Uh, she's given it three stars, saying they work as you would expect. <laughs> as I would expect... What does that even mean, Jane? Maybe I have high hopes for my Pritstick experience. You get out of my head, Jane. You don't know me. You don't know my life. <laughs> so, on to my review of the week. It's Hannah in London's review of London Zoo. It's informative, it's thoughtful, it's engaging. And just look at that title. London Zoo, so, so tired. <laughs> this could go either way, Nish. Is she tired from having fun? Or has London Zoo inspired within Hannah a profound ennui? <laughs> you know what they say, Nish. When a man is tired of London Zoo, he is tired... 
of life, Zoo. <laughs> Literally, no human being has ever said that. I heard it on the train. Okay, look, Pierre, I get your point. We review everything. The public's opinion has far too much power, even when their reviews are arbitrary and unqualified. We get it. But you're meant to be our reviewer. So why can't you do something useful for the viewers and maybe just review, like, I don't know, a film that's out now or something? Because it's been done, Nish. I'm trying to carve my own niche, Nish. It's a public... <laughs> it's a public service. Someone needs to know about this stuff, or rather, someone needs to know that someone thinks they know about this stuff, right? <laughs> Here's your film review. Oh, Leslie in Plymouth, The Smurfs, The Lost Village movie, three stars, popcorn too salty. <laughs> you see? Sort it out, Smurfs, The Lost Village movie. <laughs> correct amount of salt Leslie likes on his or her popcorn. You know he or she was coming, and you did nothing! You Hollywood liberal elite, how dare you look down on the salt preferences of good, hard-working families like Leslie is or has. Screw you, Smurfs the Lost Village movie! This is... No. No. Yes. No. Yes. Do not applaud yes. that. Yes. Do applaud it. Do not applaud... This is bullshit, Pierre. This whole thing. Oh, I'm sorry, did you just... Call all of this bullshit? Yeah, I did. It's bullshit. Did you just review my review review? <laughs> ah, yes. That's right, Nish. You're the reviewer now. <laughs> Feels good to have an opinion, doesn't it, Nish? And then say it out loud. <laughs> he who reviews the reviewers should be careful, Nish, lest he thereby become a reviewer himself. <laughs> Is that a quote? It's Nietzsche, Nish. <laughs> Nish, Nietzsche, Nish. Come on! That's right! I just reviewed your review, review, review! <laughs> We're all reviewers now, Nish. Every time you buy a book, every time you book a plumber, rate and review, rate and review, and other people can say if the review is useful or not, and review the review. It's a beautiful, endless feedback loop, Nish, and you can't fight it anymore. <laughs> 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 Are you done? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Piano Valley! <laughs> Let's go back to Rachel at the social media wall. Thank you very much, Nish. Uh, so, well, we have been absolutely overwhelmed, actually, by your response to the question we posed at the start of the show, which was, what job have you been sacked from and why? We've had absolutely several responses. <laughs> like this one. Whilst working as an estate agent, I got caught lying to customers so that they would increase offers. Didn't get sacked, though. They gave me one of those Audis like twats have. <laughs> <laughs> Profits before people, and why not? <laughs> nice to start on a happy one. And um, uh, this one came in from Teresa Good, who says, I got sacked for being too attractive and everyone at work wanting to have sex with me. Frankly, though, teaching wasn't for me anyway. <laughs> that panned out well, then, in the end. Good to hear. <laughs> And finally, back to the stories with this one from Ovaltine Hound, who says, Prince Philip should be ashamed of his xenophobic attitude, especially as his filthy Greek blood has forever tainted the royal bloodline. <laughs> That's a timely reprimand for our eldest royal there. Uh, so there's just time for me to say thank you for a really great response to the question we posed earlier for no obvious reason. <laughs> and back to you, Nish. Thank you, Rachel Paris! Just time for a final visit to the MASH News Desk. The latest headlines. Look what came out of my fanny, says Facebook mum. <laughs> Boris claims toxic atmosphere at number 10 is David Davis's breath. <laughs> Morbidly obese cat dies of adorable heart attack. <laughs> but first... As the world's biggest arts festival gets underway, Edinburgh locals have been asking themselves where on earth all these twats come from. <laughs> we can go live to Nathan Muir, who is on the city's idiot-packed streets. Every year, thousands of attention-hungry hopefuls descend on Edinburgh, armed with ukuleles, monologues and overconfidence. <laughs> but for the locals, the issue is not just the volume of twats, but the constant fear that they might accidentally end up 
in some sort of performance. I was in a corner shop and the checkout woman starts role-playing with my shopping, pretending my chicken had fathered my yogurts. That went on for 20 minutes. It got four stars in The Guardian. I ran home to lock myself away, only to find a poet was doing free verse in my garden. If he hands me a flyer, I'm gonna fucking lose it. A man's ludicrously expensive wristwatch has gained him the respect of other total bellends. <laughs> Sales manager Joseph Turner's £1,400 Diplomat Edition Visa Aquatech 9 has made him more popular with tedious materialistic men who also enjoy golf. Uh, it's beautifully uh, crafted in chunky masculine steel with uh, little dials that are hard to see without a magnifying glass. Uh, they, they do important things like uh, telling you the uh, month. Uh, a guy in the office saw it straight away and he was telling me about his new BMW and how much his house is worth, you know. <laughs> then just last week, the managing director of Oswestry Guttering Supplies Limited said, you know, nice watch. A pair of Londoners have spent an ironic week in the country laughing at the backwardness of the primitive locals. <laughs> Joseph and Nikki Turner, a smug London couple who both work in branding, have rented a farm cottage in the Cotswolds and they are in their second day of patronising rural people. <laughs> See, the cottage instructions just said to get the key from under a plant pot. I mean, oh my god, like, like, just imagine doing that in London. It's like, like a wartime, or something, yeah, isn't it? like amazing. What? And then at lunch, um, I asked for directions to an itsu. <laughs> 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 there wasn't an itsu, of course, but we did end up in this pub. Oh, yeah. It was so authentic, mm. they didn't even do tapas. Mm. We did have to leave because Nikki got in an okay. argument with this farmer about whether his agriculture was sustainable. Well, the guy was like, you don't even know what sustainable means. And we were like, yes, we do. It means good. It was a little bit patronising. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we actually uh, spent last weekend in a little B&B in the Forest of Dean. It was very romantic. Oh, you and your wife? No, actually, I was at a work conference. My mistake. <laughs> That's it for the MASH report. We'll be back in two weeks as long as Donald Trump hasn't fired all of us. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>